It's time for the Wednesday podcast of the prodigal son. You know, I pray these prayers every every time I do this podcast. These are Paul's prayers for the Ephesians, but I've adopted them for every person that walks the face of this earth. Oh, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be opened just how to how much God loves you. Glory to God. Ephesians, the first chapter in the 15th verse says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, and you may have the power to understand understand as all God's people should how wide how long how high and how deep his love is may you experience the love of Christ though it is too great to understand fully then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I thank you. I thank you and I praise you for opening my eyes to this love that you have for every person that walks the face of this earth. I praise and worship you today for the love that you've given to all mankind. And I accept that love, and I thank you, God, for opening my eyes to that love. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God for that. I thank God for his love and his mercy, and that's my prayers for you today, that you would come to understand just how much God loves you. Now let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I praise you and I thank you for your word. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Use me that I might be the light, the vessel that you can shine through and illuminate this world with the truth in your word. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all you're doing, all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be taking my scriptures today out of Hebrews the fourth chapter, and the 15th and the 16th verse. You know, I, I, uh, I reference the 16th verse a lot. But I want you, I want you to uh, get something today. I want you to come, and un- come to understand something, that you can find help in a time of need in this world that we live in. You know, Christ was... He was tempted as we are, but yet without sin. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, about, about the Lord knows what you're tempted with. He was tempted with the same thing, but yet he fulfilled the law that man couldn't. And he's our great high priest that, that knows what we go through. I want you to understand this. 
He knows what we go through. He is well capable of helping you and strengthening you through this life that we live, through his precious word. Glory to God. Ephesians, the fourth chapter and the 15th verse, it says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in, was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain, or that we may find grace to help in the time of need. Now, I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation and in the Amplified Classic Version. It says, This high priest of our of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There will we, there will we receive, we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Oh, that that is a that's a, a truth that I want you to get down into your heart and let it sink in and grasp and hold on to it. Find out just how much he wants to help you. He will help you. It says the Amplified Version says the Amplified Classic Version of Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the 15th verse. It says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have have shared a feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities to the assaults of temptation. But one who was or who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. I want to read that again. It says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities to the assaults of temptation, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Thank God. Thank God. Do you see what I'm seeing in these verses? That our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one that came and died on the cross for us, a perfect sacrifice, a perfect human sacrifice. You know, the Bible says that there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. You know, we have a we have a, a intercessor that sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. But yet, Jesus went through the same temptations as we did. The Bible says after he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him, that he went into the into the wilderness and spent forty days tempted tempted as we are and and come through those 40 days perfect perfect and died a sinner's death for each and every person that walks the face of this earth so if you if you can see what i'm talking about today jesus christ knows what you deal with on a daily basis he knows what's going on in your life that that it just tempts you and pushes you and and you you struggle with on a daily basis he knows what you go through but he also made a way of escape what does the bible say that god won't allow any temptation to come on on you that is not common to man 
and we'll make a, a way of escape. We'll make a way of escape. You know, Satan wants to do, to do more than anything to make Christian people stumble and fall, to make a mockery of what they are doing their dead level best to do in this world. People, we have, we have got to understand something, that, that God is not looking at us shamefully in disgust. Do you see what I'm saying? He's not, he knows what you go through. He knows what you are dealing with on a daily basis. He has mercy and grace. That's the reason Jesus came and died and rose again on the third day. Why? So that we could come boldly to God's throne of grace and find help when we need it. The, the, Satan and religion has, has shamed people to the point that they won't darken the door of a church because they think they've done too much. I've got news for you today. That's a lie. That is a lie. Our Lord and Savior knows exactly what we have went through in our lifetime. He knows exactly what we go through each and every day of our lives. Yet, <laughs> yet he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I on a daily basis. That's how much he loves you. He wants you to understand that he went through the same temptation that you do. And he lived it perfect. He lived it perfect while he lived here on this earth. Why? so that you could come boldly to the throne of grace in your time of need and find mercy. Find mercy. I want to read that in the, the Amplified Version again. The 15th verse of the Hebrews, the fourth chapter says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities to the assaults of temptation. But one who has tempted, who has been tempted in every respect as we are without sinning. Let us then come fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Your Lord and Savior, knows what you're going through. He knows the temptations that is thrown at you. He lived through them perfect for you so that you can see and understand what I'm telling you today to be true, that you have an advocate with the Father, a holy sacrifice that was made for every person that walks the face of this earth so that they could come boldly to God's throne of grace. Be strong. Be strong in Him. Walk in His goodness and His righteousness. I'm going to give you a scripture that set set me free from the bondage of what Satan had lied to me for so many years and told me that, that I wasn't good enough, that I'd done too much. And that's 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. It says, well, um, let me back up to the 17th verse. It says, uh, 2 Corinthians five seventeen. There it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And the 18th verse is, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now listen to this. This set me free. This verse says, for he that is God, hath made him, that is Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus didn't know sin. He never committed sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He put up with all the temptations, lived through all the temptations, stood strong, fulfilled the law of God, so that we could be righteous in him. That's what he wants you to see and understand today in this, in this world that you live in, that if you are born again, you are righteous in God's eyes through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. God sees you through Jesus' sacrifice. I thank God that that I come to that understanding and that truth. And I want you to come to understand the same truth. That God loves you. He made a way for you to be righteous through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for you on the cross at Calvary. Now you may be saying, well, I'm not born again. I I can't say that I'm righteous in my Lord and Savior. Well, that's the easiest thing in the world. Step out by faith. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. That's all it takes. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That is all it takes. And and (laughs) that's all it will ever take to be born again. Don't let anybody fool you. Don't let any devil from hell lie to you and say there's more to it than that. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead to justify you in the eyes of a holy and a righteous God. See, Jesus was tempted as we are. But we have a high priest. We have a high priest making intercession for us. And, and so that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly to God's throne. Boldly in Him. Walk into the throne room of God and accept the mercy and the grace that Jesus Christ died to give you. Oh, I thank God that I've come to that understanding, that realization. Praise the Lord that he has given me and you and every other person in this world that we live in today the grace and the mercy and the truth in his word to live by. That's what I want you I want you to see and understand every time I oh I want every time I do one of these podcasts that you can take this word and live by it. Because what God said to you, for you, and about you in his word is true. Accept that truth. Stand in that truth. Live in that truth. Because you have a high priest that was tempted as you are, yet without sin. Oh, without sin. And he died the death that you were supposed to die. Why? So that... He could give you life. Oh, I thank God for that eternal life that he has given me and each and every other person in this world 
that eternal life in the kingdom of God with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. I promise you, I promise you, it's the best thing that you have ever done, that you ever will do. And when when you come to understand and realize that, when you come to see and understand how good God is, the love that He has given each and every one of us to accept, to live in, to walk in, when you see and understand that, oh, it'll be it'll be a a, a freedom that you've never ever experienced before. Glory to God. If you listen to this podcast, go to our website. It's the dash prodigalson.com. Oh, I thank God that that I've come to know and and understand the truth that God has written in his book. This holy word that I that I provoke you and try to urge you to believe every day of your life that that Jesus Christ was tempted as we are. And and died in our place. Glory to God. If you're listening to this podcast and, and, and God's made a change in your life. And if you've been born again, listen to this podcast. If you've been born again, reading God's word and coming to understand the truth that I'm talking about in this in this podcast today. Get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. We want to pray for you. We want to we want to guide you and direct you and point you to God's word, not religion, not any kind of rules and regulation, but God's word, the truth in God's word. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigalson dot com. I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you. Thank you. That you are are allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you into sowing into this ministry. To help us put out this truth all over the world. All over the world. You know, I, I go back from time to time and look at all the, the countries that, that, that this podcast has been downloaded in. It's unreal. It's unreal the downloads that we have all over this world on every continent except Antarctica. And I don't think they show statistics for Antarctica. But I thank God that people are getting set free through this ministry, through this podcast, not because anything that I've done, but through what the Word has done in their life. And partners, you've got a part in that. You're sowing into this ministry, helping us to put his word out, the truth that people are are being set free by. Oh, I thank God for the hope, the hope that people are finding in the truth in God's word. Partners, thank you. Thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.